on the spot. National Film Board's up-to-the-minute report on what's going on somewhere in Canada. This week and every week, NFB camera crews are on the spot where things are happening, recording the varied and colorful life of Canadians. Tonight we invite you to join a film board crew with Fred Davis on another location. This is Fred Davis speaking to you from Vancouver, B.C. You know, most people have always been fascinated by the sight of wild animals. And when they get the chance to see them in captivity, they flock around and stare at them by the hour. That's why in today's On the Spot assignment, we thought you might like to travel with us through the Stanley Park Zoo. Nanook the polar bear gets her morning shower before breakfast. Cold water, of course, doesn't bother her, being a former resident of the North Pole. Lending a rather formal aspect to the breakfast parade is Mr. Penguin, complete with white shirt and morning coat, no less. Here we see him leaving his stone apartment where he's been locked up for the night and uh, waddling down to the patio for his morning constitutional. The penguin's rather a dumb bird in a slow-witted sort of way. You understand he has to be almost coaxed to eat. That uh, sound you may hear in the background is penguin trumpeting. They're looking over the countryside, deciding whether or not that water is cool enough for a morning dip. A traditionally cautious individual, he approaches his morning dip with profound deliberation. You'd almost think he had a world-shattering decision to make. Well, there's the decision. And splash, we're in the water. And it's time for the morning bath. Well, his brothers uh, figure they might want to deliberate for a while, too. As I've said, it takes them a long time to reach any kind of a decision. Well, here's the young man who came to dinner and forgot to go home. No member of the penguin family. Oscar is a baby seal. We understand that he was started off in here as a bottle baby and got along so well with the penguins, they've just left him here. Well, there's number two. After much deliberation, he's decided he wants that morning swim after all. On an empty stomach, they're not too interested in breaking any speed records, but if they want to, they can get up to 15 knots by the use of those flippers or wings. Hey, what are you doing here? You're no penguin. Of course, when he grows up, he'll have to join his brothers and cousins in their roomier quarters over here. The seals and sea lions can always be counted upon for a scene of feverish activity when there's any food in the off. That croaking sound is sea lion talk for let's eat. In a case like this, it's the early bird getting the worm. Once that keeper makes his appearance with the fish bucket, and they're out of the water momentarily in an effort to get some of that breakfast. Well, there's no such thing as manners here. It's splash and jump and get over to that fish as soon as you can. Some of them try to be cute about it. Fellow up on top of the ladder there, he hopes to be in a better position to see where the fish is going. The job of Peter, of course, uh, requires a bit of fairness in seeing that each one gets his own share. Sometimes that's hard to regulate. Because if you've got an agile jumper, he gets out and intercepts one of those forward passes. Uh, uh, 
Well, the fellow on top looks like he's been waiting long enough. And there he goes for that handful of fish. Back to the others as they even up the spoils. Ah. There he goes to take it right out of his hand. Well, there's our friend up on top again. He figured he did pretty well on the last jump. Here's an interested bystander. Apparently, he doesn't like fish. Another interesting aspect to Stanley Park is the number of birds that share the grounds with the visitors. In case you're wondering what this is, this is the rear and side view of a peacock. Here's the other view, a very vain character indeed. Can you say something into the microphone? Well, they don't come much tamer than this. No crowding, please. There's enough for everybody. Well, that's all for today. The bread line's over. A sight to gladden a hunter's eye. But here in the sanctuary of the park, birds of various species have no reason for fear or want. This long-legged gent is the flamingo. Actually, there's nothing preventing these birds from flying away, but why should they when they can continually freeload on a generous public? The keepers here at Stanley Park all do an excellent job, but right now I'd like you to meet an unusual one. He's a Labrador retriever. Among other things, Pete enjoys helping to keep the park clean and tidy. He's a handy fellow to have around. Pete belongs to the curator of the zoo here, Mr. Alan Best. Alan, aren't you ever worried that the dog might be tempted to bother the birds here? No, in fact, he's, he protects them from stray dogs that get into the park. Uh, do you know of an occasion where he actually did go after a bird? Never unless I've sent him deliberately to fetch one. Well, you do have an occasion where you would send him deliberately, would you? Oh, yes, there are times when the ducks get out in the water, crippled bird or a bird we've got to catch up, and then we send the dog in to fetch it out. How does he uh, manage to get it out? He carries it in his mouth, brings it to me. Uh, how is he with them? Is he gentle with them? Oh, he's more gentle than I am. I mean, he never hurts a bird at all. Well, that, that's something I'd really like to see. Well... As a matter of fact, there's a bird there in that pond that we've got to get out. I think it's got a crippled wing. I could show you that now, if you like. Fine. Okay. Oh. See that? Get him. Get him. Over here. There, yeah, he's got it now. Come on, Pete. Good dog. Bring it here. Good dog. Come on, then. Come on. There's a good dog. Is it all right? Yes, it's got a slightly damaged wing, but I think we'll put it in the hospital for a day or two. Keep an eye on it. Treat them just like human beings. Uh, tell me, Alan, um, uh, before you came to Stanley Park three years ago, I understand you were with the London Zoo, is that right? Yes, I was at the London Zoo before the war, and after the war I was collecting animals in South America. Oh, 
Uh, do you have any particular problems here about uh, bringing an animal from an extreme climate and uh, keeping them here? Well, here, our chief problem has been the penguins, of course. They're an example of an animal which is brought from the Antarctic across the equator and then up to a temperate climate. And there are problems involved there, temperature. You just let them sort of climatize themselves gradually and keep an eye on them? Is that what happens? Yes, one's got to be very careful with them at first to see they don't get too hot. But they soon accustom themselves. How about the problem of food? I imagine that uh, you wouldn't be able to get the actual food the animal was used to in its original habitat. How do you get around something like that? Well, that's one of the big problems, actually, of zookeeping. Uh, you can't always give an animal the food it has in its natural state. For example, our giant anteaters. In the natural state, they'd probably eat a million ants in a day. Well, we can't provide a million ants here, so we give them a substitute diet, and in this case, it's dog food and canned milk, and they do very well on it. You sort of experiment you get what, uh, what is helping the animal out. Is that the idea? Well, that's one of the things you've got to know. Also, you've got to experiment as well. Well, I suppose every successful curator is always on the lookout for new and different animals to keep the visitors happy? Oh, yes, as many as possible. But uh, it's not always easy to lay hands on them, actually. Sometimes I've got to go out myself and look for one. I see. Well, thank you very much, Alan Best. Uh, we wish you lots of luck in the future. Thank you very much. Now, before we conclude our visit to Stanley Park, we should spend a few minutes now with the uh, most inimitable showman of the animal world, the monkeys. like an interesting interview, but who is going to interview whom? Care to come over and say a few words to the television audience, Coco? Oh, that's a nice thing to do. This fellow's a spider monkey. He uses his tail just about uh, as easily as he uses a paw or leg. He can hang by it or he can swing by it if necessary. Coco is a Cephas monkey. He doesn't mind hanging by his tail either, or swinging by it. Show off. Anybody interested in some food? Easy now, easy, please. Let's watch our table manners. Ah, ah, ah. First come, first serve, eh, Susie? Here you are, Susie. Don't grab now. That's it. Just take the biscuit. Leave a little of the skin. How is it the phrase goes, any similarity between these characters and persons living or dead is purely coincidental? In any case, we hope you've enjoyed your visit here at Stanley Park Zoo. This is Fred Davis speaking to you from Vancouver, and hope you'll join us again next week at the same time for another Canadian on-the-spot story.